Hey guys, how are you doing out there this fine Saturday afternoon? I have intermittent interruptions from the Super Bowl of motocross across the street there, but don't let that bother you. Now, when you get into this business or hobby or craft or whatever you want to call it, obsession, addiction, affliction, um, you're going to build a one cigar box and you're going to go, oh, I'm hooked on this, and then you're going to have to build a bunch more, and then about the time you have 200 of them, you go, maybe I should sell them or something like that. So the trick to this, if you're going to get into this to any extent, is once you have a recipe that's successful, try to produce a product that is the same. So there's dependence, there's reliability, there's all kinds of things. Dependability, that's the word I'm looking for. Now, if you're building one, say, license plate guitar, and you have the resources, build a couple at the same time and replicate, duplicate, whatever, Kate, what you're doing so you can build a few and you'll gain some efficiencies. And one of the ways I have done that is by the use of templates. Now, I'm going to pull out some stuff you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I used to build a lot of cigar box guitars. That's how I started. People want me to keep doing that. I have, I'm looking at 50 Camacho boxes right over here right now. But, hey, Bob Log, how you doing? Yeah. So... When I started building these things, it took me a while to figure out how to cut the scarf joint so these necks were more dependable. When I figured out that I needed a template, I stole this idea from Darren Dukes. And I've got a video on how to make this template right up there. Where am I? Right about now. Yeah, up there, I think. If not, it's on the other side. So then I got into the world of coffee cans. And there's a lot to do on these coffee cans. I want the seam uh, up here where, it's, where um, it's reinforcing where the controls go and all that. So I built a number of these. Uh, this lines everything up on the top of the can. This allows you to drill the holes for where the bolts go underneath here that you can't even see. And this gadget right here allows you to put it on the top of any can line the can up the way you want and then this will give you the pocket hole locations to cut the can. I think I've got a playlist called templates and I'm going to give you a link to it right up there right about now and then finally when you start doing license plate guitars you got a lot to worry about. You got where, where do you want to pick up for example, to show up, do you want to cover up numbers? Do you not? Do you want to keep some exposed? How, uh, how's the scale? Where's your pickup going to go? Where's your bridge going to go? And I even have a template that shows you where to cut the drop downs and all that kind of thing. Now, when you start moving into guitars, especially arch tops, this is a California junk pile. Hey, let's burn up these cards. It's right up there, right about now. Um, these are infamous to wire. If they came infamously difficult to wire, if they came without a pickup, you are having to fish through the F holes and where you're going to put the input jack and all that thing, and you're going to become really, really familiar with things like wire hangers and um, dental floss and all that kind of thing. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on how to make a template to wire up some common controls that you would put into an arch top. Um, you may use a surface mount um, coil pickup, low profile, which means you won't have a hole to fish these things through. Or you may use something else. Um, I put a set of Gibson 57s in a, an arch top 
Um, I had a lot of big holes to work with. Of course, I had to fix the tone bars. That episode is called um, The Restaurant Junk Pile. I'll have a look at that one up there. But what we're going to do is we are going to build a template to wire up an arch top guitar. Now, you know this kit. It is known as the Mississippi Mud Slide. Started off as a kit. I did a uh, playlist start to finish, pulled it out of the box, stained it with Mississippi Mud, clay. Uh, this is an odd guitar. Um, the playlist for this build is right up there. You'll learn a lot of things. It's about to leave uh, my house and uh, go to Mississippi. Imagine that. I want to give a shout out to Wendy Jean Garrison. Wink, wink. Uh, there might be a connection there. Anyway, when I built this kit out, one of the episodes was about the options you had in the color uh, of the hardware and the pickups. So you saw it with gold, you saw it with nickel or chrome, and now you see some black pieces on it. Every time I did that, I had to change the wiring out, and it was a nightmare. Believe me. So, every time I turn around, I got this. Look at this mess. There's a couple of harnesses in here. A couple of three-way switches. Anyway, you're wiring all this stuff, or it might come with the kit, or you can buy these things pre-wired for, a, for a two pickups, or two coils, excuse me, and a single input jack, and then you got tone controls and stuff. But there's two here, and I can't even get them apart right now. Imagine fishing this mess into something like this, where you have really limited access and maybe not even a hole up here. Nothing but, again, dental floss, magnets. See, this thing is even trying to grab onto... Uh, a coat hanger and dental floss. It was a nightmare. So, what we're going to do today is, I've hinted around in this in another episode, I'm going to show you how to use your guitar body shape while you have it and make a template that will make your future projects easy to do. Could be any number of types of guitars or whatever. But instead of having this mess, you're going to be able to wire your stuff up. You're going to save materials. The stuff is going to be easier to fish in. And this stuff is laying around and it's cheap. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And then in an episode after that, coming up shortly after you build one of these, we're actually going to use this. And I'm going to show you how to wire a three-way a switch which lets you flip between neck and bridge or both and use separate volume and tone controls like on the Mississippi mudslide. So that said, what you're going to need is pretty simple. Let's have a look at that quick. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your home improvement store and you are going to get a piece of this stuff. It's kind of like masonite, but it's whiteboard on one side that you use dry erase markers on. And on the other side, it is actually a chalkboard. Now, if you want to be really cool, I'll tell you this. There's enough in one of these to make two of these. So if you want to be really cool... You cut two, and you use a ruler like this, and you pretend that it is a neck like this, and you cut a hole in it up here, and you attach this to here, and you use one side or the other. You hang a marker or a piece of chalk off of here, and you give it to somebody and they can hang it in the kitchen and they can write grocery list or your honeydews or whatever. If it's the honeydews, you want to make sure that you got a rag in your pocket at all times so you can come by and erase someone no one's looking and then clear the board. But the good part about this is while you're doing layout, you can use chalk to 
draw out your wiring diagram. You can use dry erase marker and it's reusable. This thing is really easy to do. Let's get to the bench. I'll show you how to do one and then I'll close this out and then we'll film the next one where I show you how to actually use it and come up with a wiring scenario that works for you that doesn't look like this mess of scrap apparatus. Let's go to the bench. All right, dog barking or not, here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of paper, could be a piece of cardboard, could be a piece of newspaper, could be anything that the body of the guitar that you are going to use will fit on. Let me get this strap off of the guitar. So I'm simply gonna put this guitar like this and I'm going to take anything that I have that will make a mark. Now I just happen to have this whole thing of dry erase markers. I don't suggest you use chalk, but use something that you can simply trace around the guitar. Now make sure that you don't get a magic marker up on the body of your guitar, but you're basically just going to go around the whole guitar like that until you have an outline of the guitar. Okay, what I did is once that paper was cut out, the shape, I transferred it to a piece of cardboard. I can put this away um, and cut forms out of it later or templates out of it. But notice that I also marked where my holes are going to be. Now, Let's say that you want to do a single volume control for two coil pickups and a three-way switch, and maybe you want to put the switch here or up here, wherever you want to put it. You can use different color markers to mark which holes are for what. For example, if you want to do three-way switch, two humbuckers, separate volume and tone control, you might color code this in red and then the other one in green or whatever. But anyway, make one of these before you start cutting into your masonite chalkboard slash whiteboard on the other side material. Okay, so now we're going to bring up the blackboard one side, whiteboard the other side. The reason that I like the blackboard side is because I can use chalk and I can uh, get rid of it easily and again this is about marking things out. Um, this material that I have here is about 24 inches wide by a little bit over 36 inches long. So what I can do now is I take my cardboard cut out and if I lay this out right there's enough for two of these and I want to be efficient with the use of my material because I have a lot left over in the middle and over here by the time I get those done uh, but again all I'm going to do is you want to remember you might have a left-handed template you might have a right-handed template but you want to just take this and again go around, hold it down so it doesn't move and you're going to easily get two body shapes like so out of one piece of this material. Now, while I've got this material here like this, I can do headstock templates a couple of them how are we doing can you see it if I do this right I'm going to leave a little gap for cutting but I could do a couple of headstock templates like so of course I'm going to put my mark where the drop down is for the scarf joint I could do you don't want that to be there. You'd be getting a call from Gibson. I could do 
a couple of templates for a coffee can where the holes bolt through the top of the can into the neck. I can put one of those here like so, go around it, and while I'm doing that, I can make sure I mark where the holes are going to be to drill through. I can put a mark where the center is, and then of course when I cut that out, I would notch those, put a little V notch in there, like so. But I can use this material for a lot of stuff. Now, in the event I make a mistake laying this out, use a dry erase marker. Don't use a magic marker because if I make a mistake, Right here, I can erase this, like so. But, pretty easy to use. Really simple to lay out. And you could even do guitar shape forms out of this, right? So, once I get this done, I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw. I'm going to lay it out to where, when I'm drawing my lines here, we're going to figure out, is our bandsaw clearance? Can we cut everything? Um, and once the bandsaw work is done, you can take this to a belt sander um, and make everything nice and smooth. Take a drill, drill your holes out, and you will actually end up with this, like so, easy money, doesn't get any easier than this, okay, there you go, it really doesn't get any easier than that, if you got a guitar, um, especially a shape you want to use, uh, single cutaway, Florentine cutaway, um, your classic arch top design, all you have to do is take a piece of paper, trace it out, transfer it to cardboard if you want, make the holes wherever you're going to need them, cut it out on a piece of black board one side, white board on the other, take it to your band saw, use a jigsaw, take it to your belt sander, use a file, sandpaper, whatever you want, get one of these, and then draw out your wiring diagram like this before you even start, and you use dry erase markers and you're all done, one of these little erasers, and you're good to go. It's gonna save you a lot of time and effort and when the guitar is gone, link to the music below, but when the guitar is gone, you'll wish you had it, and if you, if you played your cards right, you will. Next episode, we are going to actually use that template to show you just how easy, efficient, and effective it is to save materials, get your spacing right, and that way everything goes back in and when you wire up the guitar and you fish it in it becomes pretty easy you could actually if you have a couple kits or if you're making bodies yourself whether it's a, a license plate guitar or a coffee can or whatever you want you will have it ready to go and you could actually get ahead of the process by building wiring harnesses so hey I'm I hope this helps you. Don't forget there will be a link up there to a playlist about all these different templates. I hope it helps you. Most of these ideas I stole from somebody else. The other ones I stumbled on by complete ignorance and frustration. But if they help you, give me a like, subscribe, and that way the bell goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning, most Saturday mornings, L.A. time. See you soon.